Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday morning. Let me make sure my microphone is on. It is good. If you are a first time viewer here, welcome. My name is Becca Oaks. I'm an owner and craft educator here at Oak and Lamb. Miss Rachel Langston is also an owner and craft educator. You may or may not hear her voice. She has the poops and pukes today. She's not Hi, feeling everyone. great. Hi, everyone. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> Anna is also an owner and craft educator. She can't believe I said poops and pukes on a live. She is here. Um, back I know we're comfortable. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, anyway, welcome. We are excited to do a little crafty craft with you all today. I'm doing a wood project. Does it count as wood if it's popsicle sticks and yeah, dowel rods? It's wood. It's wood. We haven't wood. got that saw out in a while. This is wood. I'm using my miter saw. I am making a, I guess a coaster, but it looks like a pallet. Look how cute. It's a pallet coaster. I love it. Love it. And then I'm using a um, scorch marker. I asked you all what your favorite wood burning techniques were. Most of you all agreed it was like a paste because the scorch marker runs. Um, however, my Hobby Lobby only had the scorch marker, didn't have anything else. So I practiced up and have some tips for you all. It actually turned out pretty good once I figured it out. Um, so like I said, I'm using a 3 8 inch dowel rod. I've already cut it, I'm not gonna cut it. I'm using massive popsicle sticks. Um, I don't know how big they are. I know they're one inch tall, hold on. I got these at Walmart on clearance for two something. Oh, that's pretty good. They're eight inches. And I'm using the Scorch Marker Pro, wood burning made easy. Gotta be honest, there is a learning curve. Um, and then a, is it, is it double sided? The, yeah, the tips. Yes. One okay. is a brush and one is, uh, oh. like the pen applicator type thing. Um, and also a staple gun, which you can glue this together. You don't have to staple it, but I think it looks pretty cool on there and, and it will hold better than just glue. So that's why I chose that. We're going to be using our little Cricut Joy and a scrap piece of vinyl so that we can create a stencil. Not using that. That's smart vinyl. Would rather die. Would rather die. I would rather use a non-scrap piece than that. Me oh, too. I think there's a piece right here. It's got lots of glitter on it. It's a, it's a good scrap. Um, and then I do have a heat gun. So the heat gun activates the scorch marker pen and gives you that scorched look. Who all do we have here this morning? we got a lot of friends with us, a Lots lot of, of our regulars. If there's anybody new, let us know. We love to welcome newbies here. Yeah. Um, Uh-oh, I hope Bathroom Baby isn't taking a nap. Amy, he is, and you know what? He's a, He is just a go-with-the-flow kind of guy. He's going to have to be. It, it will be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are we making today? We are making a coaster, a wooden pallet coaster. A little mini, po uh, yep. And then we're scorch marking it, wood burning it with a stencil. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Rachel already shared it. Before I get started, do want to point out we are running a promotion right now on our membership. You can get $20 off our annual membership using the code 20OFF. And the cool thing about this promotion is that it's a grandfathered promotion. We rarely ever do that. But if you purchase with that code, then next year when your membership renews, it renews at that discounted price. Generally, it will go back up. So you can get a membership for $179, which includes lots of fun things. Member-only content, member-only podcast, member-only Facebook group where our community co convenes. We gather there. We do stuff. Um, Access to our entire library of cut files with free commercial use license and our Cricut courses that are amazing. If you are new to cricketing, you need those Cricut courses. So use that code, join us. Um, yeah, let me know if there are any questions I need to address. If not, I'm gonna just get in the thick of this project. Um, Is this easy, moderate, or difficult? Easy, easy. I, well, I think it's easy. Would you say it's easy? I would say it's easy. I mean, creating the stencil is easy. If you're nervous about wood projects, I think this is a decent one to start with because you'll gain a lot of confidence through the process. Very inexpensive. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to make the stencil on the Joy today. 
if you need education on that, we do have other videos actually creating a stencil. Um, so look that up for sure. But I am going to just do a, a couple of little cuts here with my miter saw and just show you. I think a lot of women, especially who aren't familiar with woodworking and power tools and things like that are scared by the thought of a miter saw. And I think the miter saw and Anna can correct me is probably like the second tool that we learned to use when we were maybe third. I know we used a jigsaw really early on and drills and things like that. But the miter saw, in my opinion, is, is it's pretty easy. I don't get super scared with it. Uh, a drill press, maybe. maybe. Anyway, um, and I, I like this one in particular. This one is a small one. Um, is this the eight and a half, Anna, or 10? Seven and a half, she thinks. It's a small one. You can get large ones as well. But this is good for a small crafter, and we don't have a lot of space here, and we just um, kind of fold it up, not fold it up, but lock it down, move it around, and put it on a, a shelf in our cabinet when we're finished. And so it's a really good one. Ryobi makes pretty good stuff. This one also is a sliding miter saw, so you can get larger cuts, which is nice. Um, but you can lock that in place. And it also has these clamps, which are nice if you're doing longer pieces and want to clamp those down so it doesn't move on you. Um, grab some safety goggles. I'm not wearing any, but I know I'll get inundated with comments on it. Grab you some safety goggles and cut your dowel rods. So these dowel rods, I cut three. Like I said, they are uh, 3 8 by 12 inch. You can get them 36 inches. You can get them up to like eight feet or something. I just got these because it was easy to work with. And I cut three pieces at four and a half inches. And then I am going to take these popsicle sticks and I'm going to cut them at four inches. And you just need to decide how close you want your slats together for this palette or how far apart you want them. So if you want to go to that overhead really quick, Rachel, I kind of show them. Okay. Anna said if you are new with a miter saw, she encourages you to clamp down any um, dowel rods that you're using because sometimes they like to shoot out. I didn't have that problem with this one, um, but that's a good, a good piece of advice. Well, this is square. This dowel rod is square. She said anything round likes to, so that's why I didn't. Um, so to decide how many I want, I have this placed out at four inches, which is what I wanted. And then I am going to just place these on here, see how close I like it. The one that I made earlier, I made a little bit bigger, and I put five of these slats. You can see. I think I want this one to be four because I want more space in between so that it looks more like a palette. Okay, so that looks good. So I'm going to go with four, which means I need four on the top and four on the bottom, so eight total. And you can cut all of these individually, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cut them together. Somewhere I have a hair tie because I don't have a rubber band, but I do with it my wrist. I'm going to tie these together. You Ooh, could, smart. You could clamp them together if you wanted to be really um, safe. Safe. I'm just going to tie them together. Anna's dying over here. I'm just showing you how we do it when we're making do with what we've got. I do have clamps, though. I want to use clamp because that's going to throw your cut off. No, it's you not. Yep. Okay. I'll show you how it's not going to throw my cut off in a second. Okay, so I'm just going to cut the very end of this off all the way through. I hope he's watching too. Then I want this to be four inches. So I'm going to mark four inches on here. Just like this. And when you're making your cut, you need to make your cut to the outside of your mark. So I put this mark right here. You're going to want to make your cut out here to this side so that it's actually four inches. And you need to take into consideration that your blade, is, is it an eighth of an inch? Your blade is right at an eighth of an inch. So if I, if I measured, or if I put my blade right in the middle of this mark, then it would push over and make my cut shorter than four inches. So keep that in mind. And then what I am going to do is take a piece of wood and place it in my miter saw 
I don't know what all you can see. Let me pull this over here. Like this, so that it can butt up against something and it will um, make all of this even. See what I mean? Got it like this, it's gonna butt up, it's not gonna move on me. Does that make sense? I'm going to place this here. Make sure I've got a good cut. Put this right here. And then cut through. Now I've got all eight pieces that quick. And another thing that I just wanted to point out, do you all have a fun little dust buster like this? Oh, these are essential. I love, I won't do it right now, but we use this so much just for crafting, specifically like this. Like we have some sawdust from our miter saw and it can just suck it right up. And then it, it's a rechargeable, it was like 30 or 40 bucks at Walmart. Highly recommend having it. Um, Plus you can be rough with them because they're decently cheap. You yeah. Know? Well, and mine came with a replacement plan for Ooh. like seven bucks or something. They completely replaced one of mine at home because it wouldn't charge. Okay. So, let me clean this off. We'll cut it out in a second. Let's go ahead and put this guy together. And like I said earlier, I am just using a staple gun. This is the arrow. Uh, Rich, do you remember the, the numbers on it? We used to have it memorized. God, I wish I did. T. I don't know. Don't. Okay. Five zero, the X one, two, two, zero. Okay. What we like specifically about this is that you just push down, shoot it in. It's really easy to do. You don't have to have a lot of hand strength like you do with some other ones. Yeah. Um, and your hand doesn't get caught in this in like with some of the other uh -huh. ones. That's really nice. Okay. So to start this out, I'm just going to use one and line up at the very top like this. Line it up and shoot one of these in. The... Um, staples that I'm using are 3 8 inch, so they'll go in pretty far. And then I'm going to do the other very far end, line it up really good, and shoot it in. Now I'm going to go in the middle, like this, even them up, and then I'll shoot them in once I like the placement of them. That looks pretty good. What I like about this is it can look a little imperfect. I right. Mean, it's a palette. Palettes are imperfect. You're yeah. correct. Correct. Shoot that one in. Shoot this one in. And then we'll do the other side. Other side is easier because these pieces are pretty much in place. Place that one on, just like this. Shoot it in. Am I far enough up, Rach? Do what? Am I far enough up? Yeah, you, yeah, okay. you could even bring it down if you wanted to. Okay. Shoot this one in. And this one. And then you can decide a couple of things. Do you want this one to be stapled in or do you want to glue it in or do you just want to place it in there and have it be tight enough? Totally up to you. Um, I think I'm going to glue mine in because I want there to be plenty. I don't want staples right through the middle to interfere with my graphic. So I'm just going to use the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. Uh, you can use this on wood. And I will place... A strip like this. You can also use wood glue. You have wood glue. But I haven't used this glue with wood before and I wanted to see how well it does. Let's place that right like that. And then we're going to put on the other slats in the exact same way that we did the front side. This is a quick project, right guys? Carol said this is the perfect project to have for my camper. Yeah! be so cute you could put lots of different sayings on it um okay they're loving your hair color too thank you that is so kind do this one first i'm gonna do the one side all the way down just like i did the other one and then go do the other side 
it goes together really, really quickly. And like if you were doing several of these, I'd just make all the cuts at the same time and kind of do an assembly line of uh, production there. I'm out of staples. If you didn't want to scorch this, you could also paint it or stain it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or just put vinyl on it. Oh, yeah, that'd be cute. Oop. That one didn't go in. There we go. I just use needle nose pliers to pull those out. This is softer wood, so it's not a massive pain to pull it out if you shoot it wrong. But look, how cute. Fun That's little adorable. palette. Adorable. And then let's measure this so that we can get the right stencil. Uh, Maka said, what if I don't have a miter saw? What else could I possibly use? You can use a saw, like what's it called? A, a um, hand saw with yeah. the box. Uh -huh. You could do that. Or, uh, fun fact, if you go to Lowe's and purchase the dowel rods, they will cut them for you. You can ask them to cut to whatever length that you want. Um, we're looking at roughly three and three eighths. So I'm just gonna use a font and do a drink up text. Um, the height of my popsicle stick is one inch, so I need to keep that into consideration. Um, sorry, I should have already had this at this. Well, your laptop's not plugged up, so if you want me to do that, I can do that for mm, you. No, it's okay. Since I'm not teaching how to do it, it'll be fine. That means if you guys want to know how to do it, let me know. I can link you a video. Yeah. Do we have any newbies here today? Any they need to come out of the woodwork. Y'all let me friends. know. Let us know. We want to say hi to you. I'm using a font that does not have the center of the letter, so it would be a good stencil font because um, you don't have to place the centers. I just like the look of it, especially with scorch pens because scorch pens have a tendency, and I'll show you in a minute, to run. Um, I'll show you. Drink up. While that's cutting, we'll talk about some tips here. Okay, subtract, make it. I'm like I said, just gonna use my little Cricut Joy. I love using it for little projects like this. I made I um filmed a video yesterday, five minute Cricut projects, and I actually made five projects in the video, and two of the projects were with the Cricut Joy, so that was really fun. Um, I love seeing, it was kind of like a race for myself to see how quickly I can make. I'd love to know how many projects I can make in like 30 minutes or something like that. It would be fun. Sounds horrible to me for a time yeah, craft. You would hate it. I'm glad you thought that'd be fun. In the video, because Rachel wasn't here yesterday when I was filming it, I was giving her instructions. I, you haven't looked at it yet, have you? No. And I was like, um, Rachel, I'm envisioning like all of this sped up unless there's like a craft fail or something. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you shouldn't have to. <laughs> I love when Becca talks to me while I'm editing videos. Sometimes I sing to her. Okay, so let's look at this while this cuts. Miss Rebecca is a newbie. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, welcome. I just unplugged my Cricut Joy. Um. Yes, what brought you to the Oak and Lamb channel? Let us know. We are always curious to see how you all find us. Um, Y'all okay, Rachel? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, I accidentally unplugged my joy, so I have to go back in and do everything I just did. There we go. Um... we go the scorch pen does better on woods that are not super grainy the reason that it does better with woods that are not super grainy is that the scorch pen likes to run and if it's super grainy then it has more it has basically divots that will make it run worse um, so it's, it's good to get a wood that is super smooth. They recommend that you 
sand woods down with like a 220 grit. Um, but these I didn't sand at all because they were so smooth. The other thing you can see here, the Scorchman has two sides. One side is a brush. The other side is like a pen that you prime. I like the side with the pen that you prime because I have found that I get too much of the solution with the brush and it, um, it, it tends to run more. Miss Susan is a newbie. Also, Cineemi. Sin Cineemi. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome, guys. Okay, so here is how I've made my stencil. I created, because I didn't show you, created a rectangle in Design Space. And then I put my text on top of it and I subtracted it or sliced it, whichever term you are more familiar with. And now I have a stencil and that will fit right on one of these little planks. So I have a piece of transfer tape here. I love that you chose a font that doesn't have the insides of the letters. Yeah, well, I did that for a couple of reasons. One, because I like it. And two, because it just gives more of a chance for it to run and bleed in bad ways if you have the centers of those. Because the, I find the centers are what move the most on me in a stencil. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so let's just transfer this over here. You can put it in the center, you can put it on the bottom, whatever you want to do. This is up to you. Just place it down. You can smooth it with your fingers and then remove. But I like to take my brayer and make sure that it is good and brayed down. And I have found that a brayer works even better for me in, for this particular purpose than a scraper. I don't know why, I don't know if I put more pressure on it, if it covers more, I'm not sure, uh, but it works really well. So I've already primed this pen. To prime it, you're just gonna push it up and down like this until you see the solution come on here. I want to tell you this, the key to not having so much liquid that it seeps everywhere is don't put a ton of the liquid on here. If you prime it and there's a ton on there, then uh, take a towel or, or something like that and kind of wipe it off. You want it to feel dry when you are painting with it. Um, so I'm just gonna go like this. It feels dry, it feels like I should probably prime it and put some more of the liquid on there, but this is exactly the way it needs to feel so that it doesn't seep underneath this and into the, the grain of the wood. Uh, Carol has a really great question. Would the Mod Podge hack you showed us of sealing the edges keep the scorch paint from running? It might keep the wood from burning. So that's probably what I would assume. You yeah. wanna do this on un... So I had the yeah. same thought though, Miss Carol. I, honestly, I was like, that would be really cool, but I was afraid that, um, yeah, it would keep it from burning. But try it out, let me know. So I like that it's this color, it's really easy to see. Really easy to apply. That's all, doesn't have to be super thick, doesn't have to be super dark. And now I'm gonna remove this stencil. You can see even, I don't know if you can see it or not, but even with as little as I put on there, there's a little bit of seepage right there, which seepage, <laughs> which is fun. Um, and then I'm just gonna take this, heat it up. And there we go. That was quick. Right? Really quick. Really, really quick. I kind of want to do the other side just to see if we can make it without the seepage. I'm going to since we're sitting here. Let me know what questions you have. That craft is finished, essentially finished. Super easy, right? Let me do this other one really quick because we have time. Premium. 
in vinyl. Have you all done any wood burning before? Let me know. I know several of you all have because we had we talked about the pasting or the paste and all that stuff, the different methods that um, you all had done. These little palettes are adorable. Thank you, Miss Susan. I think they're fun, super fun. And if you are concerned, one thing that I was thinking about is the um, staples. Like if you have it on a delicate surface or something like that, maybe you would want to glue the bottom one and not staple it so that it doesn't scratch your table or something like that. You could get those little bitty, like for the furniture scooties, like yeah, the little could. bitty, yeah. you know. That's true. That's Yeah, true. Um, I'm sure that's what they're called as furniture scooties. I mean, I don't know what else I would have searched. Me either. <laughs> no sensor of letters drive me crazy. Stacy. you're not the only one. Lots of people feel that way. Isn't it hysterical? Would we seal this project, Becca? I wouldn't. There's no, well, eh, I, I would not just because I think that it would, it will look good, the aging of like the condensation from drinks and stuff like that. If you do not want the color of the wood to change because of water and things like that, then you would want to seal it. You could use like a marine varnish or something like that that will hold up really well um, with the condensation from your glasses being on it. Great question. You could also put resin over it if you wanted to um, and seal it with resin, but I kind of think that that's overkill. I think it would be just as good to do a poly or, or marine varnish. Okay. Let's do this again. And you're being awfully quiet. Oh, are you doing your task? Yeah. Anna's going to be on our flock talk with us today. Oh. What? You're not going to be on the flock talk? You're, yeah, you're going to be on it. You're here. The people have spoken. They want to see more Anna. Is Kat here today? I haven't seen her or heard her comments. I don't think so. If so, she's being quiet, which is How not like Kat. How dare her. Okay. This one has even less, I think. Micah said, if I use this and it gets wet, will that mess up the words? No, because it's burned in there. I'll show you in a second. I'll wet this one. It's permanent. I mean, you could sand it off if you go deep enough, but you know. Right. Yeah, it's not like, it's not like an ink that will wipe off or anything like that. Those of you with laser cutters could engrave on these too. That would be cute. Okay, this one didn't run like the other one. I don't think the other one looks bad at all. No, it's not bad. It's just kind of like a round, like right there. You see? Oh, the edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one didn't do that at all. I like it. Now I'm curious. I'm going to go back in here uh, and be a perfectionist. Mel Bell said, how hard would it be to sand off areas that seep? It would be pretty hard to be that yeah. careful. Uh, Diana said, how do I get glitter off my burnishing roller? I've tried everything. I would say run under the sink. Yeah, soap and water. Yeah. That's what I do. Do you have the Cricut burnishing roller? Or which one? The brayer, I'm trying to think, does this, does this one come out? I think this one comes out, doesn't it? Yeah, this pops off and you can click. Good Lord, that's gross. Look at that. Can you see how disgusting that is? We need, we need to clean that. We should, yeah, we should clean ours. Clean. Let's do that. 
Let me do one thing first. Oh, I'm happy with that. That one looks good. That looks good. Really, really happy. So you can achieve decent projects with that. Um, I think that the pace probably is easier because it doesn't run obviously like that. Uh, but if you're in a pinch like, like we were and couldn't get the paste, um, just make sure, like I said, if you, if you're just tuning in, you probably didn't hear me, make sure that your wood is sanded so that there is not a ton of grain um, and texture in it so that it will seep and then make sure that you are not saturating it. My thought was it needs to be fully saturated so that it will burn really even and it will look good and dark and all that, but that's not true. You do not, it, do not have to have it fully saturated um, in order to get a good, this has glitter on it. Alcohol, did, have you tried alcohol on yours? Because my glitter's coming right off with the alcohol on the paper towel. She said, oh, cool. I didn't know you could remove the roller. Yes, you can. Why is my day jade diction UV resin not looking smooth? It's curing wavy on flat keychains. So, Christina, how close is the light to your project? If you throw that light like a quarter inch above your project, I have found that sometimes it'll almost cure so fast that it waves a little it doesn't have time to yeah self level, to self -level. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. my only tip i can give you yeah uh the other thing i don't know what you're doing are you like filling a silicone mold full of the uv resin and it's still wavy or are you using it like on acrylic or something like that and it's wavy i have found personally because i tend to be a little bit light-handed with my resin and then go back and do another one but i have found that if my first layer is too thin and i've tried to spread it out and it's too thin then it's it, it's kind of if resin can be clumpy, it's sort of clumpy. Does that make sense? Yeah, like there's so, not enough of it to self-level. Uh, yes, exactly. So maybe try putting a little bit more on it if that's the case. Um, if you are just filling a silicone mold up, then try what Rachel said about um, just make sure. You can kind of jiggle your mold too to kind of help it level. Um, and then make sure that it looks good and level before there's UV light around it at all. Any other crafting questions? We're finished with this, this craft. So if you have any other craft related questions that are not related to this, that's totally fine. We are very happy to answer them. Um, or just questions in general, questions about our membership, um, questions about um, how Rachel is when she's sick. I don't, you know. Uh, questions Still about Chappie Doo, who is here with us? Let us know. I've made a mess here, a little overwhelmed by it. I told Becca, I'd rather have a migraine than be nauseous. That's my least favorite symptom ever is being nauseous. Um, Becca, did Beckett get a battle wound? Did he? We're all so proud of him. Bex Oaks. I'm telling you, their team this year is terrible baseball. Oh, uh, yeah. It's so bad. It is so bad, so bad. Um, it generally has ended in slaughter rule or really close to slaughter rule. I got there Tuesday night and um, it was like seven to zero. They ended up losing 14 to one. Okay. But the one run was scored by my little Bexy Oaksy who got walked to first, then he stole second, he stole third, and then he stole home. And I'm telling you, I have never been more proud of that kid. That kid, he's fast. He's really fast. Um, but he comes out of the dugout, and after he was like, Mama, look, he does this, and his whole, of course, his whole leg is just covered in dirt. And I was like, I know, baby. And then he gets home, and he's like, my leg hurts. And I was like, yeah, yeah, your leg hurts. But he doesn't complain about anything. I don't know why I didn't, like, put two and two together. Takes his pants off, and his underwear is on backward, mind you. And he's got, like, this strawberry his on his leg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to cut a card and deboss the fold. It's way better, but Cricut won't let me use the light cardstock setting and medium ruins the cut on the card. What do I do? That's a good question. You can't decrease, can you decrease the pressure of the debossing tip? 
I'm drawing a blank right now. You all weigh in. Let me know. You don't want to do, why do you not want to use the scoring wheel? Do you have a scoring wheel or do you only have a scoring stylus? If you have a scoring wheel, in my opinion, the scoring wheel is better than a, the debossing tip for, for the fold. Uh, but if you don't have that, the scoring stylus does tend to, depending on what your cardstock is, does sometimes rip the top layer of the cardstock. So I understand that. Um, yay, Diana, that's so happy. Um, I have scorched paste in a jar. Would doing the vinyl stencil still work with the paste? Yeah, Rachel, you've used the paste. Did you use uh -huh. the stencil like that the same way that I did just I with did the paste? I did indeed. Yeah, I sure did. I brushed it on lightly with a brush and it worked great. I cannot use the inset on a font to fill it in. It doesn't inset it all. So Penny, make your font really, 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 really huge. Sometimes when fonts are too small, it won't inset. But if you make it very, very big, um, then it should inset for you. It's just one of those design space things. Yeah, so you make it huge, do your insets, and then size it down. Once you've attached everything together, you can size it down. Because sometimes that happens to us too. Um... Do, 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 do. Did you see anything else, Rachel? I'm trying oh. to look back. Okay. Is Charlie going to be Big Brother? Uh -huh. No time soon. Uh -huh. I'm just sick. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know who got me sick. Apparently, it's a pretty contagious little bug. But Becca assured me it'd be over in 24 hours, so I can definitely handle it for 24 hours. Two of my three. Had it for 24 hours. I don't know how I didn't get it because I kissed my kids right on the mouth. I don't care. Rachel had it last week too. Did she? Yeah. We'll say she gave it to you. Well, yeah, it's her fault. Yeah. Darn Rachel. She. Uh, okay, Christina, that is. She said, oh, I never thought of that. I'm placing the resin on acrylic key chance. Add a little bit more resin. I think you'll really like it. Does the quartz paste or pen give off a smell? No, the pen does not. But when you put the heat gun on it, it smells like burnt wood because it's it is burning the wood. Um, but no, the actual pen doesn't. I have a scoring wheel. I just have better luck with the deboss fold being more even. That's interesting. I've never had, huh. Let me look into it. I've never tried the deboss tool for a score line, a score fold line, because um, I just like my, my scoring wheel. But let me look, I'll look. Email us hello at oakenlame.com with that question. Um, I'll look into it. I'll try it myself and see what we can come up with. No, a baby is not on the way. No. No, no, no. Um, hi, Dane. Hello, ladies. First time catching a live. I'm a teacher, and so I'm always in class. Hopefully, um, you can catch us some this this summer. We'll be live all summer, and hopefully you can catch us then. But I'm glad you were able to catch us today. Did you say how deep the burn is? I didn't say. Um, it's not it, It's not an engrave. So it's not like, like if you run your finger over it, you can't feel a difference. So it, it, doesn't, it doesn't like inset into the wood. It just burns that top layer. I use the stylus instead of the scoring wheels. Um, Nikki, Rachel also prefers the stylus over the wheels. Um, so I just found out about the flock march. True girls are killing me. I want it all. Melissa, right? Isn't it so cute? For those of you who do not know, we do have the flock shop over on our website, oakandlame.com. You can select the flock shop up on the top menu. Even if you're not a flock member, you can view, browse, and purchase a flock merchandise because it's cute it's really cute I got my squirrel apron the other day I love it Amy I love seeing everyone post their merch when it's it comes so in. cute I love it is Megan here did she did any of it I know Megan was looking at the leggings did anyone order the leggings because I'm curious about them um Dollar Tree sells the little palette coasters I don't know if anyone has mentioned it yet just started live Kelsey I didn't know that I didn't know that they sold them that's um Skip, skip a couple steps. That's awesome. Is it like a four pack for a dollar or is each one like a dollar something or what? Let me know. Um, anything else? No. No, 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 no. They seem pretty good. Okay. Thank you all for being here. We will have some content go out tomorrow. Like I mentioned, I did film a video, five minute craft or cricket video crafts. 
That's exactly the title it will be, I'm sure. We've conned Anna into maybe staying for our flock talk that you guys, member only, will see this Saturday. Yes, our podcast flock talk, if you did not know, we have. That's exciting. I didn't order them, but I do love my notebooks. Megan, good. That's good to hear. Um, Yes, Christina, Becca made a post with it just the other day in the group. Are you talking about the, what are you talking about? The um, recipe chat i did yes there's a different way that you can create chats in groups on facebook so our private facebook group the flock um let me look really quick if i can pull it up because i was doing it on my phone when i created it um okay if you go to the facebook group over on a desktop over to the left there's like your tools and things like that well that's admin tools i don't know if it's that way for you let me know, where do you see your chats? There's a thing called community chats inside a group where you can uh, create a chat specifically about a topic and then everyone that's in that group can view it and add to it. So we do have one specifically for recipes per your all's request. Yes, oh, I thought you were raising your hand to ask a question. Um, what is the topic for Flog Talk? We are talking about marriage and relationships. Um, I need to catch up on some videos. <clears throat> Melissa, you do. Anyway, um, Christina, I will try to tag you in that chat and see if that helps. Let me look right now and see if I can do it. Um, did a day ago. Uh, Chris. I don't think it's gonna let me. I tried, but I don't think it's gonna let me. Um, I'll try to create a screen share and share it with you. Anyway, thank you all for being here today. It's been a fun Thursday crafting with you all. Like I said, we do have some pre-recorded content going out tomorrow, Flock Talk for members on Friday, and then we'll be live next Tuesday. Um, we have quite a good selection of upcoming lives and organic content that we have planned We've out. We've been I'm really inspired excited. lately. We have. I'm really excited about what's coming up. Lots of cute little crafts coming up, uh, and I can't wait to do it with you all. So have a fantastic rest of your week, and we'll see you live next week on Tuesday. <laughs>